I'm Gold Derby News and Features Editor Ray Richmond, and I'm welcoming Oscar winner Mark Yolano, sound mixer on Apple's Killers of the Flower Moon from director Martin Scorsese, to our film sound Meet the Experts panel. Mark, you've been a sound mixer for more than 40 years and worked on 150 movies or so. Project, Where does mixing, yeah. wow. Where does mixing Killers of the Flower Moon rank among your jobs? Well, each one is a, is a string is a pearl in the string. You know, it's it's uh, project specific. Our eras in our lives in, in terms of the art history of, of sound arts on on cinema. So this is um, it was a joyous, challenging um, uh, opportunity to contribute. And so, um, like many of the others, it's it's we're we're like musicians, um, Ray. We're sort of passionate about our particular instrument, um, but we come together primarily as filmmakers to tell a story. And so, each of us plays our our unique instrument in collaboration with the other musicians, if you will, the cinematographer, the production designer, uh, casting director, the wardrobe. You know, we're all in this um, commitment of of creating a singularity, a whole piece of work. And so um, that once we are sort of able to define what the idea is, what's the intent, um, what's on the page, but beyond that, the director's uh, intent and the interpretation of that intent by the performers and our performance behind the camera, then we have a roadmap and, and can become uh, fully invested in inviting the audience to, con you know, to believe, to invest in the story and, and the characters, the journey they're on and, uh, the environment in which they have that journey. Mark, uh, what were the unique challenges of uh, mixing this movie in Oklahoma? Well, um, first is the actual physical environment. We were in the dead of hot summer, very hot summer. You know, 108, 110 wasn't unusual in the shade. Um, wow. Dusty and dirty. Um, it was at the height of COVID. So... They're just staffing alone on the production for the COVID team was enormous um, and uh, a, an amazing challenge for them. Not only the you know testing and the protocols, but also the communication of whether or not there were issues there. And we were in a state that had a average uh, um, vaccination rate of about 22 percent and no hospital beds available in the whole state. So there was a kind of a disconnect there. Uh, <laughs> Um, but that being said, all of those things were sort of peripheral. You know, we had a dedicated, committed group of, of community artists who were passionately in, engaged in what it was a very significant story. We were in the actual locations where these events took place 100 years ago. Um, over 40 percent of the staffing in front of and behind the camera were people who had familial connection to the to the principals in the original in the original uh, events that took place then. Um, so there was great emotion and collaboration. Um, plus, at the at the head, we had this, you know, this this fella called uh, Martin Scorsese, who, you know, aside from him being iconic, you know, I, I grew up in New York, and um, and I I'm you know I'm L.A. based after New York, but um, was someone who um, is a great leader, you know, and in that leadership, he he finds. Um, passionate uh, contributors who can who can manifest his ideas through their particular you know tools, and that leadership is about you know trusted delegation, circle of trust, if you will, um, and about the ideas. And so, you know, <laughs> it was a joy to be a participant and a contributor in something like this because of the difficulty of the physicality, but. Also, the joy of connection that Marty and his team invested in pre-production to gain the inclusion, the participation, and ultimately the trust of the Osage Nation, um, many of which were principal supporting players um, and gave real life to the dignity of that, that culture um, as a, as a present, ever-present character in the story. When you're working with somebody at the level of Scorsese, uh... Does that help you elevate your sound mixing game as well? I mean, is the is the uh, level of expertise of the director, does it have a direct correlation on your ability? Well, as I say in The Godfather, the fish stinks from the head down. So, yes, um, 
but <laughs> in the most positive way, um, what, what what is at core is you have a community of of you know uh, a listers, not because of you know uh, ego and uh, and all the rest of that, but because of the the diversity and quality of their work generally over the, the duration of their careers know how to come to a project without ideology about the project to not repeat um, what what was successful in the past as much as to understand figure out what is needed and is new for this project for this situation you know for this story um, you know you can work with the same group over and over but each time has to be you know serving the project and this was a, an uh, almost an idealized, epitome of that concept of that theory um you know rodrigo we, you know also i had the really good fortune of having worked with many of the other collaborators in the film and on prior projects rodrigo and adam sumner our first ad and the, you know from the gaffer and the grip team and the and the wardrobe team you know all of us had had um like musicians prior nonverbal communication events you know through projects and so um it creates a short a shorthand um, and that was evident in, in the work because everybody was just so entranced by the power of being in the real places with the real people. And they're expressing this opportunity to tell the story, you know, that was of their, their, their lives, their family, their culture. It had to be so powerful. You know, I, uh, Mark, I watched Killers of the Flower Moon a, a second time, knowing I'd be speaking with you. And I, I closed my eyes a lot. All the various actors like Leonardo DiCaprio and Bob De Niro and Lily Gladstone were speaking and just listen, just listening to them really helped me to define who their characters were. And that's, I imagine, got to be the ultimate compliment to you. You're, you're living where you're in my wheelhouse there. Uh, to me, that's that's the idea. Um, you know, the to the issue of tonality in production sound and capturing performance that reveals character. It's such a subtle conversation and yet so essential. It's mu it's very much like music. It's getting under the radar and, and into the emotion of, of your audience um, and conveying character. And that starts with the collaboration with the, the actors themselves. You know, this is my fourth film with Leonardo. Um, over over a 25 year period and he he has become such a consummate you know uh, journeyman actor in his you know even this role is not it's not it's a real character role he disappears into the part and like you I during during the the workday would close my eyes and I could hear the ambivalence in his character the dignity in in, in Lily's in uh, in, in uh, Lily's character um and the um the 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 tool for deceit in in uh in Bob's Bob De Niro's character you know all of those things were manifest in their tonality the, the rhythms and in their use in various ways of the Osage language, um, which was the sort of this backbeat of the bolero of the movie's, you know, design, um, enhanced certainly by Robbie Robertson's final score, which was, you know, a privilege to be part of in, in so many ways, as was this entire project. It's an amazing set of contrasts, Mark, that these characters convey both visually yes. and sonically. Um, and, you know, one without the other would, would be barren. And that's and I, I, you know, aside from our passion in our individual areas, um, Marty is someone who, you know, um, quietly conducts from the conductor's seat, if you will, um, to bring all of that into balance. And the balance is, is you know, the difference. You know, um, it's a highly complex. Um, I think we had over a hundred speaking part. I mean, a highly complex universe, challenging environments. Um, period vehicles, which were not, you know, were not muted, you know, just all kinds of things that were part of the, um, the, the creating the, the reality of that time and that, and that issue and the collision between the, you know, the, 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 the European culture, the white culture and, and the native, and the, the native's the wrong word that's considered not respectful, but the, the, um, the, or tribal is not respectful, but the, the nation of the Osage is this very wise and even keel and measured um, response to life in general. And, you know, you put those, as you say, contrast in, uh, in, in, uh, in, in, uh, um, in, in frame is, um, you know, special. We could see when you see the movie, you see why Marty was interested in doing this film. 
we're going to wrap things there. Mark Ulano, good luck to you this coming awards season. Uh, Killers of the Flower Moon, starring Leonardo DiCaprio, Robert De Niro, and Lily Gladstone, is playing in theaters everywhere. Thanks for joining us today, Gold Derby. Thanks for having us. I appreciate it.